I'm Mitch Rendell. I'm the chairman of the Rendell Center for Civics and Civic Engagement. And I also happen to be a judge. I am now a judge on the Federal Court of Appeals, but I was also a judge on the Federal District Court, which is a trial judge. Today, we're going to talk about what a judge does. And it can vary depending upon the kind of judge. As I said, I was a trial court judge, which means that I held trials like you see on television with juries and witnesses. And I'm currently an appellate judge. And that is a judge that does not hear witnesses or trials, but we take appeals from the trial court. So if you are a party to a case in the trial court and you don't like the outcome, you take an appeal and you come to the appellate court, and there we only hear from lawyers. We don't hear juries or witnesses. We hear lawyers and they argue about what went wrong or what went right in the trial court. So anyway, some people have said that a judge is very much like an umpire or a referee in a sports game. And I think that's probably not a very bad comparison. So what does an umpire do? Well, the umpire makes sure that the game is played according to the rules. Sometimes they have to interpret the rules. You'll see the umpires go over and talk to each other and listen and see whether someone was out or safe at first base. They have to exercise their judgment and they have to make sure that the game moves along. You know, when there's that conference at the pitching mound and the umpire comes out and says, okay guys, back to work. Well, that's a lot of what a trial court judge. We make sure that the case proceeds in an orderly fashion and according to the law and the rules. Now, the trial court judge oversees everything in a case. From the moment the case is filed, let's say A is suing B for a motor vehicle accident. The case is filed and the judge has to make sure the case moves along. The judge will confer with the lawyers and establish what's called a discovery schedule where the parties will exchange information and facts and have depositions. The judge will decide a lot of what's called pretrial motions where one party wants to exclude certain evidence or another party is upset because they're not getting the information from the other side. So, the judge can be very much like that umpire and very much like a traffic cop, actually figuring out what's going on, making sure the parties are acting in accordance with the law, moving the cases along, and making sure the lawyers are being diligent. Because we have a system that's called an adversary system, which depends upon the lawyers for each side arguing what should happen in the case, and the judge doesn't have a role in that except to decide who's right or wrong and move it forward. Now, the judge will set a trial date, as I've said, and the case will move forward towards the trial. And at the trial, which may be a jury trial or what's called a bench trial, the judge again will move it along. Now, if it's a jury trial, there will be a jury impaneled and the lawyers will have a role in that. But sometimes, especially in what's called a civil case, the judge may have a bench trial. And that's where the parties decide they don't want a jury, they want the judge to decide the case on his or her own. Now a civil trial where that might happen is a case like a motor vehicle accident where one party is suing another, saying the other was at fault, and the plaintiff, the party suing, suffered damages. So a civil case will be brought for damages. A criminal case, however, will be a case brought by the government. In federal court, it's the United States attorney. In the state courts, it's the prosecutor in the state, whether it's the district attorney's office or some other official. The criminal case will be brought by the government against the defendant who is alleged to have committed a crime. And in that case, the issue will be guilt or innocence and the sentence will be imposed. So I say a bench trial can happen. That doesn't happen very often in a criminal case. In a criminal case, well, everyone has a right to a trial by jury in any case, 
But in a criminal case, rarely will the parties decide to go without the jury. So as I said, we have this adversary system. So the lawyers for the parties really conduct the trial. They will start with their openings, telling the jury what they intend to prove and laying out kind of a roadmap to guide the jury. Now the judge will oversee and make sure that the trial is proceeding in an orderly fashion. The judge will oversee the selection of juries in most instances, but usually it's up for the lawyers for the parties to question the juries in what's called voir dire, the point of which to make sure that the juror can be fair and impartial, does not have any conflict or not have any bias towards one side or the other. And the judge will rule on objections. There may be objections by lawyers all along, and you've seen that objection. And the lawyer will have to say why they think that this is not admissible under the rules of evidence. And the judge has to make that call. Now, there are lots of rules. There are rules of procedure, civil procedure, criminal procedure. They're in big books, and there's a lot of rules that have been developed in the case law. So we have rules of procedure, we have rules of evidence, and then we have the law that has been established in precedent that will relate to the actual offense or the claim. Law relating to contracts, if it's civil or tort, if it's criminal laws relating to the rules of the laws developed having to do with the criminal justice system. So the lawyers will urge that a certain law is being violated or that a certain law demands a certain result, and the judge will have to rule, exercise judgment all along the way. Now, in a jury trial, when the witnesses have testified and each party has rested, meaning they have finished their case, the lawyers will make closing arguments, uh, which are not evidence, they are just arguments, and the judge will instruct the jury as to how they should view the evidence how they should decide who to believe, which is called credibility. And if it's a criminal case, the elements of the crime. If it's a civil case, what negligence means, let's say it's that motor vehicle accident. Was the defendant negligent? Was the defendant reckless? There are a lot of instructions and the jury has to use these instructions when it decides the case. Now, when I was a trial court judge, I would read those instructions and I would give the jury a copy of those instructions when they went into the jury room to deliberate because it can be difficult and it can be complicated. As I said, there are a lot of rules and we're asking the jury to decide based upon the rules, based upon who they believe and come up with their verdict. Now, sometimes the jury will be given a special verdict form where they will answer certain questions. Do you believe that the defendant ran the red light. Do you believe da da da? If you believe this, then go to question X. And in a criminal case, maybe the elements of the crime, do you find that the defendant had the requisite intent, et cetera, et cetera. And the jury goes down the sheet. Sometimes you can have many defendants in either a civil case or very often in a criminal case. Let's say a drug conspiracy, there can be several defendants and the jury has to deliberate and go over each charge as it relates to each defendant. So when we hear that juries are deliberating for a long time, it can be that they have a lot of work to do. And sometimes they will have a question for the judge and they will write their question and submit it to the judge. And the judge will confer with the lawyers and decide how to respond. The judge is going to be reluctant to add any specific instruction that hasn't already been given. Jury has the evidence, they have the instructions. Very often the judge will say, go back, consider the evidence. Sometimes the jury will want to know something that's not in the record. Well, the judge is not going to let them do that because juries have to decide the case based on the record and it can be very difficult. Now, all along the way, when the judges make the rulings, whether it's on an objection before trial or an objection to evidence being admitted during trial 
or at the end, whether there's a motion for acquittal of a criminal defendant and the judge rules on that, the judge may have to write an opinion. Why? Not just to give reasons, but also because when the case goes on appeal and the appellate court is looking at what the judge did, the appellate court can look at the reasoning and say, you know, that makes sense. We may not agree with it, but we think the judge probably got it right. And usually the judges will decide cases, again, based on the rules or the precedent. So these opinions will talk about the cases that have gone before and say, based on this case that we decided two years ago, this is what I decide. So they decide based on the rules and the law, not on what they think is fair. It's all a case of precedent and we have what's called the rule of law. So when we question what a judge did and how a judge decided a case, we shouldn't say, I disagree, unless we first ask, why did the judge decide that? And while you may not agree with the outcome, once you see the ruling and the reasoning of the judge and the case that went before that is, is governing law, you may say, well, I may have decided it differently, but I understand what the judge did and the judge decided the case according to the law. And that's what we demand of our judges, to decide the cases based upon the law and the rules. Again, it's like that umpire or that referee. We have to call them as we see them.